It's a bit of a stormy evening out here in Playa del Carmen. This afternoon I come to you with a vlog all about how to keep the conversation going when you're doing cold approach pickup or even when you're uh, you know, on dating apps like Tinder, Bumble, Hinge or whatever. And here I am in Mexico, not a bad place to see out this lockdown. If you didn't already know, as an Australian, I'm not allowed to even go back to my home country, so I'm kind of taking refuge out here, which has worked out all right. But one bit of information that I want to give, give you guys today is that I'm on my way to Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas for the 18th of March, and I'm doing a four-week natural there. And hang around to the end of the video because there's a couple of special uh, announcements, special bonuses that come with the Austin, Texas program for you American citizens um, that I'll be conducting come 18th of March. But let's now get into the topic of how to keep the conversation going. Some lovely Gulf Coast ocean lapping up against my feet. Guys, on my program here in uh, player.com, I had a student who had a condition called uh, expressive aphasia or some version of expressive aphasia. And what that means is you might be having, you know, thoughts and emotions inside of your, you know, in your heart and your mind, but having quite a lot of trouble bringing it up out of your mouth and keeping a conversation going. Now, that's a legitimate condition, though it's very common for so many people, so many guys learning the game to not know how to keep the conversation going. So for this client that I had who had expressive aphasia, we did a whole stack of drills to help him to, to deal with those bridges in conversation, those, those gaps in conversations where he couldn't keep it going. Um, and I wanna share those drills with you today, the way to approach them, the way to think about them, and kind of to, to know how to anticipate them so that you don't get lost not knowing what to say at certain times in the conversation. Now, you know, when, you know, when you're learning game, it's easy enough to, to read lines and learn techniques and understand structures. But when you're actually in the heat of the moment in that conversation, there are really, really distinct patterns that almost every conversation has that are repeated. And they're really distinct hurdles or roadblocks that you'll be encountering where you're finding it difficult to keep the conversation going or you're turning the conversation in a boring direction when you need to move it in a more constructive, colorful, exciting direction. You know, I'm no different to anybody else out there watching a video like this. I, when I was, you know, beginning of the game, I ran out of things to say all the time and I didn't know where to take the conversation or why. I make conversation with the people on the beach here. Um, and when, you know, when you're going into a bar or a club and you're initiating that conversation, you might go up and say some kind of line that you've learned, an opinion opener, you ask a basic question, uh, make an observation, crack a joke. The, the first really difficult bridge that you need to cross is where to go when there's that first lapse in conversation, okay? Oftentimes the way that a pickup will go, maybe day game, night game, or even, even on Tinder, although Tinder already has the premise of we both want to get to know each other. If you're in a bar or a club, for example, specifically, you'll roll up to a girl and you'll say a couple of things and normally it will you know, maybe include a punchline or a joke or some kind of clever or witty observation. And the girl's reaction, she's usually gonna listen because that's the polite thing to do. She might giggle at what you say because you know, you're, you are the center of attention. And after you initiate that, there's gonna be this gap in the conversation where you hope that she keeps the conversation or she kind of picks up the slack, but that's not gonna be the case. People are not motivated by gaining somebody new, they're motivated by not losing something. So when you come up as a new guy who she's never met doing cold approach, she's not motivated by that. Why would she be? But she is optimistic, right? So imagine you roll up and you would say, um, what was one of the approaches, well, the approach that my student was using, he'd roll up to the girls and say, hi, how's your evening going? Are you enjoying Mexico? Now the girl's reaction to that would pretty much always be something like, yeah, sure. And then she's open enough to hope that this might be a really cool guy who's just started a conversation with her. But she also realized that this could be a really annoying guy, like many that she's met before who are only after one thing. So at that point in time, most girls, what they're gonna do is they're gonna give you some interest, but they're not gonna be too encouraging. They're gonna throw the ball back into your court. They, they might give you a chance. You know, if you approach with good energy, you groom properly, you dress properly, you got a smile on your face, you had balls enough to do the approach, she's well within her rights to assume that you're both 
possibly going to be extremely annoying or you might be that fun, interesting, refreshing guy that she's been looking for for the longest time. So, after you say, you know, your first kind of introduction thing and your little punchline, you know, how's your, hey, having a great time in Mexico? She might say, yep. And she might wait expectantly, right? And that's when it gets hard for most guys, right? My, my student especially, and myself in the past included. So when it comes to that, it's really important, this is what you're probably missing, is that you start telling your story, okay? In Four Week Natural, we call that screening and telling. You start telling your story. Now, it doesn't really matter what your story is. And God, it's a beautiful view out here. It doesn't really matter what your story is. It matters that as you start telling your story, that you're con conveying energy, personality, and relatability. The girl is going to start to realize that you are just the kind of guy of which she's met many great guys like you in the past. So when you get to that moment of quiet in the conversation, just start telling your story, right? Now, you're going to say, we came here to work, we've moved here to work remotely, um, I, you know, I, I have business down here for two or three months. If you're in a home bar, you say, myself and my friends getting together for my friends going away party. Um, uh, we come here every Friday, you might say, we come here every Friday night, this is the kind of thing that we always do. But tonight it's, you know, my friend's celebrating something from his work this week. So you then start offering up your story and it doesn't really matter what the content of the story is. All of those examples that I just gave you are not magical. They're not gonna change a girl's life, but she's starting to realize like, oh, this is a normal person. He's not too annoying. And the fact that you can offer yourself without regret, without hesitation or without any defensiveness, she thinks you've got nothing to hide and you're not trying to be too impressive. The mistake that you might be falling into is your next, you know, that second chunk of conversation is you're trying to be impressive or DHV or be funny or something like that, which is usually an overcompensation for a lack of confidence or uh, you're being defensive and you're gonna be super boring and you're gonna, instead of you know, telling your story, you're gonna start interrogating. You're gonna say, where are you from? What are you doing? Who are you here with? You might even start getting into some kind of like boring observations, which doesn't really help the situation at all. That next step, that tricky step is you just start telling your story and finding your own conversational rhythm. You can even say the things that you plan to do that night. It's like tonight, we've got a big one planned. It should be good. Uh, I don't have any work tomorrow, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. Or you can even tell a more of a boring story. You can say, I'm gonna have a couple of drinks tonight, uh, or I'm not drinking tonight. I've got, you know, gym tomorrow, then I'm gonna watch my cousin play football. Should be pretty damn good. Use the energy, use the vibe, and, you know, with I am enough game and reapproaching game, this works totally fine to convey the vibe that we want to convey, that you're a normal guy and that you are planning on having up to 10 hours of conversation with this girl. That's what we call the 10 hour rule, okay? Now, what's the girl's reaction gonna to be to that? She's gonna say, okay, cool, right? She's gonna like the energy and what this actually automatically triggers, this automatic human reaction, people like to remind themselves that they're cool. People like to remind themselves that they're good at being social, that they're popular, that they're good conversationalists. So here you are putting some good energy in and you know, sharing it with the girl, but you're not even asking, her, asking for that energy back. You're just putting in a good energy and she, oh, it's getting a bit seaweed over here, if you can see down in the water. And she doesn't even need to say anything. You could even just be talking to yourself and, um, and that's gonna work totally fine. But after you've volunteered that information about yourself, she's probably gonna say, probably gonna test you is what she's gonna do next, right? That is the general gist of things. And if you're giving a good energy and it's, you know, you're, you're, you're volunteering information about yourself, you're giving her content to engage and judge, right? The conversation can't really go anywhere until you start offering content about yourself and the way that I describe it to students on the, uh, on the live program here is you need to almost be like a Facebook feed that she can scroll on, right? Instagram feed that she can just scroll on. You're just offering up content. And of course, how do we respond to it? We judge. So she's gonna be judgmental. She's gonna say, hmm, you think you're cool? Or, hmm, that sounds kind of lame. Or, hmm, you, you think you're such a cool uncle for going to watch your cousin play sport or whatever? And that's fine. That's what you want. You actually want to say something kind of a bit innocent, a bit mundane, 
with good energy and she's gonna come at you usually with sarcasm because that's low consciousness, easy communication for everybody. And if she comes at you with some kind of test or judgmentalism or skepticism or, you know, why are you telling me these kind of things, that's when the game is on, right? That's when we start to flip the script. And this is the third step. And most guys don't get to this, don't even get close to this. And that's why I'm teaching them to the students here in the program. So she might say something like, uh, you're not drinking tonight, boring. Or you're not drinking tonight, uh, <laughs> what do you want, a health kick? You're not drinking tonight, uh, I don't, well then I, you're no good for a drink, are you? That kind of thing. You're not drinking tonight, you've got extra money to buy my friends drinks. And then it's game on, okay? It's almost like we, we want to elicit the girl to get into that little judgment line of conversation. The third back and forth, right? When she actually opens her mouth and starts engaging you in a kind of a committed way. You like the sound of the, of the uh, waves splashing in the background. Let's get some of the guys working out. Look at this like epic beach. This like cool beach gym we have here. I'm a member of it. I go sometimes, but they don't have any leg machines. And actually, they have this like underground gym that I go to here, so I'm gonna keep working on that jawline for, for future reference. Um, so if she says something, a bit of a smart ass comment to me, like, you're not drinking tonight, mm, that's lame, then I, I'm locked, I'm loaded, I've got ammunition, I've set a precedent of positivity, so I'm allowed to come back with negativity. So already, I've shown that I'm open, easygoing, non-judgmental, positive vibe, she gives me some judgmentalism, some skepticism. And from the girl's point of view, it's playful. Remember, the girl doesn't want to just let in any random guy who she hasn't met. She wants to be selective with who she's going to open up and get to know. You've just done a cold approach. You've only been speaking to her for 30 seconds, 20 seconds. You're now allowed to hit her back. If she called you lame, you can call her lame. <laughs> if she said, why would I be interested in that? It's like, because I'm, I'm extremely awesome and you should know better, right? Now you can start with the big positive spikes. You can even do some misinterpretations like, oh, I thought you wanted me to pick you up because I'm a quite an eligible bachelor. Are you an eligible bachelorette? And then the, the banter begins, okay? And these are how bar, bar situations go. If you can deliver one degree of banter, a call out, a challenge, something like that, and she'll usually laugh when you have a bit of a reaction or it's gonna be a relief because she can see that you are a you know, grown man with the balls to approach, you're brave enough to come back from her first skepticism or test, which is a part of the Cold Approach game. And then you, know, you extend the handshake or you go for the COVID fist bump and you say, hey, my name's Alex, nice to meet you. And then who are you here with? And then you, you know, get, back, get back to basics. I'm here with my friends. Are you here with your friends? What's going on? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Okay, so that's the general gist of how to get the conversation going. And we ran through so many uh, simulations, so many simulations of how to get these conversations going in person, day game and night game, with my man who had expressive aphasia, and he got really good at doing that. So picture this: he's doing day game out here in Playa del Carmen, right? Walking along the beach, walking along the street, and he's rolling up to girls and he's telling the story, and the girls. At first, they're gonna be skeptical. They even have some language barriers. Then, you know, he tells his story and then he asks for their input. He's like, what do you think of that? And the girls will say, I don't know, I don't speak English. And that was his little moment to shine. And this guy is a, it was a brilliant coder. He was really good at coding. He actually works for the Department of Defense programming satellites to like fly around and defend the United States from things. He would then say, just so you know, I'm super fucking cool. I've got a cigar, right? <laughs> and he didn't even have a cigar. And the girls would laugh and giggle, and then he would segue, hey, my name, my name is, call him Chris for privacy reasons. Um, I'm here with my friends, I just moved here, where are you from? So he's covering both bases. He can be both silly and serious. And uh, the girls, then what the girls are thinking is, this is a cool guy, he, he can deal with a little bit of shit, uh, he's got personality, he's curious in me, he's not just trying to get laid. And another critical thing is that we're, we're both using curiosity and skepticism. It's a big concept that we've been using recently in our cold approach uh, teachings, is that yeah, we want to show our curiosity, we want to have our positive uh, excitement towards meeting the girl, but we also want to have skepticism in 
our approach. We don't just want to be eager and rapport seeking and uh, trying to get results. We also want to say, hmm, are you cool as well? Uh, can you keep up with my intellect? Will my friends like you? Why are you single? Is it something that you're not telling me? This playful, skeptical stuff so that she can kind of win you over rather than you being too easy to win over. Now, on, on Tinder, on Tinder, we, it, it goes in much the same way. You know, you've already matched with somebody who you, be, because you like the look of one another, right? And then you start telling a little bit about your story or sending gifts. Say, this is me summarized in a GIF, right? Volunteer information about yourself. Let it be content. Give them content to work with. Say, this is a gift, a gift that summarizes my day. And this is something that you can literally manifest out of thin air. You don't need the girl's prompts to do this. You know, you can send, this is me, this is a summary of me today, and send a photo of you being Snorlax, right? An image of Snorlax, if you guys know what Pokemon are. Then, <laughs> and then she's obviously gonna respond to that. She might laugh, and then you can point the finger back at her and start kind of interrogating gaming, being playful, and uh, then you've got some banter back and forth on your hands. And from that banter, you can say, uh, you know, you're pretty good at dealing with banter and you like my dad jokes. I think we should make a, you know, we should get off this app and like go to Instagram or go to WhatsApp so that we can actually think about meeting up in the future. That is a really basic thing that so many people miss. And the one thing that I want you to take from this video is that you can volunteer information it doesn't have to be a DHV. Remember that I always say on the four-week natural that it's familiarity that inspires future compliance as I get washed away in the ocean here. It's familiarity that inspires compliance. And what I mean by that is if you've got a good vibe, you feel like you're enough, you're thinking win-win game, you have a sense of abundance, which is like you're curious but skeptical, all of these things in balance, then you spend time with the girl and you ask for the phone number, ask to go on a date, that compliance will come true. And that's how pickup works. That's why I'm a dating coach on a beach in Mexico. And if you can't already tell, I love, I'm very, very lucky, very grateful to have this job that I do and uh, help the guys that I do. And it was spectacular. Like this one guy, just on the same story, the second last night of the program, he pulled for the first time on program, which was magical. Girl, uh, uh, two girls asked his, him for his number in day game and the look on his face when he came back over to him he's like dude they asked for my number I'm like well you you know you are enough and then I did his like uh, debrief call he was in Mexico I'm like mate Chris do you have any any stories for me he's like yeah I got laid again last night I'm like well good for you good for you lad if that's what you're into well done congratulations I'm glad that you're having fun in this socially open and promiscuous world that, that you live in there in Miami so there you go. Implement, make notes. I've got a question for you all. One of two things. What do you find harder? Starting the conversation or keeping the conversation going? Starting the conversation or keeping the conversation going? And I bet, I bet that your, your answer in the comments, most of you are going to say keeping the conversation going. Because it's quite easy to learn how to start the conversation, make an obvious comment, use some low-hanging fruit, humor, bullshit. That's easy. But the big problem is keeping the conversation going and, and what, what other pickup artists would have called the hook point? I mean this whole video has been about the idea of the hook point and how to get that girl to hook. Now if I've taught you anything give me a little thumbs up all right if I haven't taught you anything then don't do anything you know abuse me in the comments and say Alex you know I thought you would have gone deeper there but you didn't um, and ask me what you want me to go into the next uh, video. I've got my new little gadgets here so it's actually really easy for me to get down from the house, put a video together for you, good audio quality, and speak to you. Now, if you watch this far, about Austin, Texas. All right, as we all know, today is like the 16th of February, 2011. We got a pandemic on our hands. You know, it's not the ideal situation for socializing, but there are some places in the world that are open. And at the moment, except for the snow, Austin, Texas is open and rocking, all right? Uh, we can do night game. It's a little time shifted to earlier, but that's good. Night game, day game, there's some parties going on, grocery store game, and it's, it's summary there earlier than anywhere in the United States. And there's a huge population, it's brilliant. So if you didn't already know, 
when you sign up for one four week natural, like five weekends of live coaching with me, I train you so well that you don't need to do it again. I'm the one pickup artist who doesn't want you to spend a fortune and commit your life to investing in me and my company. I want you to invest in yourself, do your five weeks, and I want you to be happy with that result by then. You know, five weeks is a long time. And when we have such a close coach to student relationship, that's certainly achievable. And that's the case for all students. Now, what I do like, however, is community. So what you can do is you can do the five weeks with me and then join in on other four week natural programs in the future. Because you're already trained on four week natural, the way to do things, the way that we operate in field, you can join us in the club in the next city. And that could be London or Norway or Amsterdam or Croatia, any of these magical locations around the world that I know so well. And then you're winging with me. I don't need to teach you, you can implement what you've learned push it to a higher level and we can speak at like a high level military communication so you can quickly do things that you've taken five weeks to learn so you can get really you can you know take your game to the next level in terms of experience intuition and more experience winging with me plus it's always quite nice to you, they say that you you know you learn 90% of what you teach so when you're hanging around with the new group of students your new friends basically you internalize the lessons because you take on this role of competency rather than student C, you know, making up words here as I go along. So what's happening is that I'm doing two four-week naturals back to back in Austin, Texas. You only get the benefit of doing two in a row if you sign up for the first one, but if you sign up for the second one, which is beginning in April, then, you know, you're allowed to come and join me in Croatia or London or Melbourne. and. The way that the, the vaccines are, you know, going through the roof, and the new cases are dropping off the face of the planet, things are looking really good. I'm so it's such a pleasure to to, to know, it's such a relief to know that we're all going to be back to normal really soon. At least us, you know, people who are under the age of 50, where you know we we like going out, we like socialising, we love spring and summer, and summer open air bars. We can go and meet girls flirt and especially what I'm interested in is learning about ourself, uh, accelerating your, your personal development curve and for you guys to you know, conquer your dating game once and for all and to have social and emotional and dating abundance, right? It's all, it's all there to be done and to be had in the summer of 2021. We certainly owe ourselves after a long hard year last year. Such a pleasure to speak to you from this lovely location on the beach. Coming at you this evening with gratitude from Mexico. I'm uh, ankle deep in some lovely water. And um, I don't even want this video to end because I'm having so much fun. But yeah, give us a like, give us a comment. What's harder, keeping the conversation going or starting the conversation? And by all means, comment in the, put in the comments what you want me to speak about in the next video in the next couple of days. All right, I, uh, I really enjoy doing this. See you later from Playa del Carmen.